Do you know what I like? I like the truth, because the truth is so reliable. You don't have to have faith in it, you don't have to believe in it. It just is the truth. And a lot of people seem to hate ignorance, like it's a crime. Now, I don't really hate ignorance, because ignorance is just a lack of knowledge. It's like calling Eskimos idiots because they don't know who Obama is. You can't blame people for being ignorant. It's just a lack of knowledge, which is quite disheartening. No, ignorance is not the problem. Not in my opinion, anyway. What is a problem is people who ignore the truth. People who have been shown a sufficient amount of facts and evidence and theories to completely rebuke all their claims so that they just flat out ignore it. There are people, alive, right now, who believe that the world is 10,000 years old, or even younger. Now, this is quite obviously false. It is not true. We know, through dating methods and the distance of stars, that the Earth is in fact 4.5 billion years old. For some, the notion of a young Earth is just caused by ignorance, which is quite disheartening, like I explained earlier. They can't help that, and they need to be informed on a subject. But for the people who think that the world is a mere thousands of years old, even though that they've been confronted with the facts and evidence that the world is in fact billions of years old, I have no idea what else to say to those people. An example of a young Earth creationist is this guy, Eric Hovind. Now, this guy has his own website, which has a little section which is devoted to proving that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. Why? Why bother? We already know, through radiometric dating, carbon-14 dating, the distance of stars, lead in uranium-rich materials, and a plethora of other evidence to suggest, in fact, confirm with great confidence that the world is at least 4 billion years old. But Eric has his own evidence evidence that the world is only 6,000 years old, and that humans lived with dinosaurs. I think there's a lot of evidence to show man and dinosaurs did indeed live together. Now he states here that the oldest organism on the planet is only 4,200 years old, which is not true. But because of this 4,200 year old coral reef, the Earth cannot be more than 6,000 years old. What? What? Yeah, this is a young Earth. There's a limiting factor on how old this world actually is. It is not millions or billions of years old. It's only about, anybody remember? 6, only about 6,000 years old, exactly right. Did you hear that, audience? Not only is Eric Hovind a brilliant scientist, he's also a fucking genius. Now this is a prime example of the dismissal of obvious evidence, which really, really annoys me. But there is, in fact, something that annoys me even more than that. And that's when a person or a group of people assert an unfalsifiable or unproven notion as the truth. Because of this, it, it destroys the word truth. It makes it what it isn't anymore. All these religions, all of these um, philosophies are all saying, oh, my word is a word of truth. They can't all be true, so which one is true? Maybe none of them. I'm not saying that this stuff is false. That would just be absurd, because it's unfalsifiable. You can't falsify it. I'm just saying that it's not true. It's in a state of unfalsification, if that's even a word. If something is an unfalsifiable hypothesis, scientists and anyone who's rational or logical just says, fucking forget about it. Just forget about it, because if it's unfalsifiable, it means that no scientific test can possibly be set up to prove it right or prove it wrong. So what's the point in even talking about it? And of course, you can believe in it, you can have faith in it, but you can't assert it as truth if you haven't proven it yet. Let's say I have um, an anteater, and it's blue, and it's 100 feet tall, and it's in my garage. Now, if I told someone about that, they'd obviously say, well, let me see it. And I would say, well, as soon as you go into the garage, the aardvark turns invisible, and you can't see it anymore. And this person would say, well, let me just feel around for it, you know, it's got to be in here somewhere, it can't be, um, you know, tiny, it's a hundred foot tall, remember? And then I would simply have to say, well, it's an intangible anteater, you can't touch it, you know, it's ethereal, so you can't touch it. Does that mean that the anteater doesn't exist? No. It just means it will be irrational and nonsensical to suggest that the word of the anteater was truth if there's not a shred of evidence to suggest that the anteater does exist. And that is all I wanted to say. Man and dinosaurs. Man and dinosaurs.